family and welcome to the Changing Way Out of the Box Sunday School Morning Service. Our scripture this morning is coming from Psalm chapter 84, verse 1 and 2, and it reads, How lovely is your tabernacle, O Lord of hosts! My soul longs, yes, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and flesh cry out for the living God. I'm ready. Now, our series for this month is Living Free from the Deadly Trap of Defense. And uh, today's lesson topic is Courage and Criticism. Now, please join me in welcoming our instructor, Changing Woman and Pastor of Christian Education, my biological <laughs> and spiritual mother. Oh, say that. Yes, Prophet yeah. Sophia Court. Woohoo! Amen. 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 Yes. Y'all can tell that's my baby girl. Yes. <laughs> my baby girl. I love her so much. Um, yes, as she mentioned today, we're talking about courage and criticism. Courage and criticism. Before we get started, let us pray. Father God in heaven, Lord, we pray that you would take control. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. And we thank you, sir, for your work and your presence. Mm. In Jesus' name, charge this atmosphere. Prepare each and every heart as good soil, oh yes. God, to receive your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So last week we uh, returned, to, of course, to our study of Naked and Unafraid um, by Kevin Gerald. And we ended the section of the book on abandoning smallness. Yes. That is smallness in our thinking, getting beyond our fears, amen? Mm -hmm. And focusing on those big, audacious, uh, sand and stars, goals, and promises of God. Now we're moving into the section on pushing past mm. criticism, starting with this lesson in chapter nine on courage and criticism. And it's such an important chapter because so many of us face criticism from uh, people outside our families, people within our families, people outside our circle of friends, people within our circle of friends, sometimes even within our own selves. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. With self-criticism and, and mm -hmm. uh, faulty self-talk. Amen. None of that is of God. None of that is of God. And I'm going to show you in the scriptures that it's not of God. But in the meantime, uh, let's go ahead and start talking about why we need courage and criticism. Um, a lot of times uh, overthinking and anticipating potential criticism or when we're faced with criticism in the spur of the moment or even after we've done or said something, having criticism come, we must consider the potential effects of being paralyzed by criticism, all right? It can cause you to be stagnant in your growth, stagnant in the steps you take in God, amen? Mm -hmm. All of these things are things that we gotta think about when it comes to receiving criticism and whether or not we're going to receive criticism, mm -hmm. all right? We must consider the potential paralyzing effects criticism may have on our achieving our goals or doing the things God has called us to do. No man should be able to come to you after you've heard the voice of God and convince you by criticizing you not to move forward in God. Okay. Amen. Nobody should do that. As a matter of fact, if you allow that to happen, now you are in the position of idolizing or man of putting a man over uh, the place of God. God is sovereign in our lives. Yes. He's the one that has the final decision, the final say so. And you cannot elevate a man to the position of God in your life. Mm. Yes. You can't do that, mm -hmm. all right? So uh, the probability of criticism, especially in this Christian walk is hot, mm. all right? I want you to realize that up front, the probability of your being criticized as a Christian is very high. And I'm going to show you why that is the case uh, scripturally. Criticism is the risk that we encounter as we walk this Christian faith. So what is criticism? Criticism, hear me clearly, criticism is the act of passing severe judgment, censorship, 
or fault finding. So let's unpack that definition. This means that what we're focusing on today is how we move forward uh, in courage in light of or in the face of severe judgment, mm. censorship, or fault finding. Mm. Judgment is the forming of an opinion, estimate, notion, or conclusion as from circumstances presented to the mind. So basically, somebody has looked at your actions or they've heard your word and they've summed it up mm. and they pass a judgment. If that judgment is severe, we're calling that criticism. Mm -hmm. So in the context of what we're talking about today, we're not talking about positive uh, criticism or constructive criticism. We're going to get into that mm -hmm. later on in the book. We call that a critique. So off the bat, I want you to realize that we are making a distinction between a positive critique and a negative criticism. In this context, the criticism is always negative mm -hmm. because the way we are defining it is severe judgment an opinion pass on your words or actions form as a basis of looking at your words or actions and then it being sincere or censorship that was another one we mentioned censorship is a strong or vehement expression of disapproval you're walking a holy walk you're living your life the way you think god has told you to live it and all of a sudden, somebody is expressing severe disapproval. Mm -hmm. You're trying to be holier than thou. Or you can't reach nobody. Or don't nobody want to fool with you. Mm -hmm. uh, these are all um, censorships of your actions. All right? Um, you know, a lot of times we may be amongst a circle of friends. And all of a sudden, the friends will start talking about something and they'll see you sitting there. They'll like be, and they'll be like, well, you know, we can't say that around so-and-so. Mm. Or let's talk about that once we're not around so-and-so. By their actions, they have censored you, mm -hmm. censored your presence, censored your participation in that conversation. And that in and of itself is another form of criticism. Also, fault-finding. Fault finding is the act of pointing out faults, especially faults of a petty nature, Ooh. continually and usually trivial complaining. That's what we consider to be fault finding when it's petty. Mm -hmm. It's any little thing. You cough too holy. Why are you coughing like that? You can cough, right? You doing too much. Why are you doing all of that? What you waving your hands for? That's too much. That's petty complaining. With this, my waving my hand, how does that hurt anybody? It's petty. It's petty complaining. So that's fault finding. So whether it's severe opinions being formed against you, outward passionate expressions of disapproval, or petty trivial complaining, we must have courage to move beyond despite the criticism. Now, in a moment, we're going to discuss courage. OK, but before we do, I must explain to you the dangers of not having courage to move beyond criticism. First of all, criticism has a kind of sticky quality to it. Uh, if you read this chapter in the book, it talked a lot about this. All right. But it has a tendency to stick to you. Mm -hmm. This means that we as human beings have a tendency to replay criticism repeatedly in our minds as a matter of fact we can replay criticism more often than we replay positive things mm -hmm. if we're not careful right if we're not careful whether we thought it up ourselves or whether somebody just said something and sometimes let me tell you this sometimes criticism does not come out um venomous sometimes it can come out as a joke mm -hmm. Sometimes it can come out as playful banter. Mm -hmm. But what we do when we are taking it in ourselves is we're analyzing it and we're thinking it over and over again. And we're asking ourselves, why did Joe, why did they say that? Yeah. yeah. There must have been some truth to it. 
Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And so now that playful banter, the joke, the gesturing, the, the joking, the joning, what we call it in the community, let's talk real. Mm -hmm. Somebody joning your clothes, mm -hmm. all right? You're dressing too holy. Mm -hmm. Oh, why are you wearing them baggy clothes? Oh my God. You fine. Show your body. Right? When the word of God tells us to present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. The Bible also says the women dress in modest apparel. Your apparel is always modest. And so somebody thinks, uh, uh, may say, oh, you think you're so holy. You think you're so special. All right? You got a fine body. Why don't you show it? You see what I'm saying? That's a form of criticism. And if we're not too careful, we'll take those little nuggets and we'll start turning it over and over and over down and, and, and it'll God. stick to us. So as a result, when we do that, when we turn it over in our minds, we re-injure ourselves mentally, emotionally, spiritually, mm -hmm. each time we replay it in our minds. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, it can result in bitterness, self-doubt, shame and even deep feelings of guilt and all of this is from somebody making a joke mm -hmm. come on saints. Mm -mm -mm. right the second thing that we got to consider is that criticism can sound more convincing than our own confidence the two must be separated and qualified did the criticism come from somebody who has demonstrated love and compassion towards you before and let me say this, everybody smiling in your face is not showing you love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can we be real? That's right. <laughs> People put on a happy face. People put on a happy face. And sometimes people are fake. Mm -hmm. Can we be real? Yes. I know we're all saints. I'm not calling any of y'all fake. I'm just saying, everybody smiling in your face is not real. Yes. All right, let's use some wisdom. Was that person in the right frame of mind? Having the right insights, understanding, and experience, experiences as you. Is this person qualified to criticize you? All right, did God give you the thing that's being criticized? And is the person criticizing you higher than God? That's the question you need to ask yourself. Is this person higher than God? Should I elevate their opinion over God's holy word? Mm. The obvious answer to that is absolutely not. Right. All right. Third, criticism can originate from within. I touched on this before, but I need to touch on it again. Even with our own self-talk. Oh, why am I so skinny? Look at my legs. I can't stand my legs. Look at my feet. Oh, man, my feet. I can't wear no sandals. My feet look bad. Yet the Bible says you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Mm -hmm. What are you talking about? Do you see where I'm going with yeah. this? That's your own negative self-talk that's criticizing you. I can't get up there and speak. Isn't that what Moses said? Mm -hmm. Moses said, I stutter. stutter. <laughs> and they ain't going to believe me. Why would they believe me? Those are things Moses had said to himself. And so when God was ready to send him forth, guess what? He repeated that same negative criticism or self-talk that he had all along. Mm. And sometimes we do the same thing, right? Yes. I'm too old or I'm too young. I'm too this, I'm too that. We give God all kinds of excuses. But that criticism come, is coming from our own self-talk. Mm. Even with self-talk, if your self-talk sounds like self-criticism, that self-talk must be disqualified. It is no longer standing up to the word of God. We must bring every thought into captivity to the obedience to the word of God. That's 2 Corinthians 10 and 5. And even the thoughts of your self-talk can't pass the test, if it can't pass the test of Philippians 4 and 8, meaning those thoughts must be true. They must be just. They must be noble. They must be lovely. They must be of good report, virtuous, praiseworthy. Those are the thoughts that are obedient uh, to the word of God. 
And if there are thoughts coming into your mind that are contrary to Philippians 4 and 8, they must be taken into captivity and made subject to the word of God. Amen. Amen. Self-criticism is hurtful and are fiery darts from the enemy. The only way you can quench them is through faith. And that's through faith in the word of God. You got to bring those thoughts this, of, this, of the negative criticism, the negative self-talk into subjection. Amen? Amen. Now let's talk about courage. Courage comes from the Hebrew word amats. Say that with me. Amats. 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 It means to be determined, to make oneself alert, to strengthen oneself, confirm oneself, persist, to prove superior to, to exhibit strength. Come on, that's courage. Mm. To be strong, to feel strong. There was a song I learned as a youth in the children's choir, and it had the words, take courage, my soul, mm. and let us journey on. Mm. Though the night is dark and I am far from home, thanks be to God, the morning light appears, the storm is passing over. Mm. The storm is passing over, amen. Mm. So what we are learning today is that in the face of severe opinions, passionate disapproval, and petty complaining, we must be determined. We must strengthen ourselves and persist. We must have courage in criticism. So now before I move on, I would be remiss if I didn't admit that criticism can morph into full-blown persecution. Mm. Wow. So true, so true, so true. It can. It can. Persecution is defined as a program or campaign mm. to exterminate, eliminate, drive away, or subjugate a people because of their religion, race, or beliefs. People of God, make no mistake about it. Criticism can result in acts of persecution. Mm. Let's be real about it. Okay, that is the risk. But whether it is criticism or full-blown persecution, we must still have courage. The Lord promised Joshua and now promises us in Joshua 1.9, this is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Mm -hmm. So as I go deeper into this lesson, I want you to think about three questions. Have these three questions in your mind. What is your risk tolerance for criticism? Someone passing severe judgment or finding fault with you. What is your tolerance for that risk? What is your risk tolerance for criticism if you thought it could lead to persecution? Somebody canceling you, mm. whether in your family, in your church, on your job, in your home. What is your risk tolerance for that? And how does your risk tolerance for criticism affect what you do for Christ? Mm. Mm. Those are the three questions I want you to keep in your mind. What's your tolerance for it? Uh, what happens if you think it could go into persecution? And how is it affecting what you do for Christ? Because only what you do for Christ will last. Amen. Now, throughout this book, we've been studying David and his decision to celebrate victory by dancing before the Lord as our example. So from 2 Samuel 6, verses 14 through 16, it says, And David was dancing before the Lord with all his might, and David was wearing a linen ephod, so David and all the house of Israel were bringing up the ark of the Lord with shouting and the sound of the trumpet. Then it happened as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David that Michael, the daughter of Saul, looked out the window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord. Listen to this. And she despised him in her heart. 
So already we know she disqualified. She's disqualified from any criticism, right? Because those were the three conditions, right? Somebody has to have a pure heart towards you to be qualified to speak anything over your life, especially as it relates to the things of God. So already in this first scripture, we know that Michael ain't qualified to say nothing about David. She needs to sit down. Sit down. <laughs> That's what she should have done. But she despised him in her heart. Remember, we must consider the source. Yes. When we hear criticism, Michael was David's wife, but she was still Saul's daughter. Mm. Even though Saul was dead. Yeah. Mm. That was still her daddy, y'all. Yeah. So David took Saul's place as king because Saul disobeyed God. The scriptures even say this. And the Lord testified of David that David was a man after God's own heart. The Lord testified that he rejected Saul and chose David. And even though Michael had actually protected David at one point from her father, David probably anticipated criticism from her. So now this leads to my first point. And now we're deep diving into the lesson. All right. We must remember when having courage and criticism, that even when criticism is anticipated before a word or action, we must still have courage and obey God. You cannot allow an anticipation of what somebody might say. Mm -hmm. Stop you from doing what God told you to do. You can't do that, people of God. Amen. All right? That God trusts us to be obedient. God trusts you to be obedient. Everybody don't have the relationship with God that you have. Think about your family. Think about the folks around you on your job. Is everybody praying like you're praying? Mm. Is everybody hearing from God like you're hearing from God? Everybody don't have that relationship. Amen? Mm -hmm. So you gotta, you gotta think about these things. Everybody is not qualified to criticize you and what you do for God. In 2 Samuel 6, 20 through 21, we overhear a conversation between David and Michael. It says, but when David returned to bless his household, Michael, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, oh, <laughs> how the king of Israel distinguished himself today. Uh oh, <laughs> He uncovered himself, took off all his clothes, in the eyes of his servant's maid, as one of the foolish ones shamelessly uncover himself. So here's David's response, y'all. David said to Michael, it was before the Lord. Mm -hmm. yes. The same Lord, mind you, yes. Yes. who chose me above your head. <laughs> Come on, sis. <laughs> and above all his house. <laughs> to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord over Israel. Therefore, I will celebrate the Lord. Mm. David knew his wife's personality, mm. but praised God anyway, despite anticipated criticism from her. Mm. Even when you know close family will, um, will denounce or will uh, speak negatively about you. I don't know um, how many of you heard me say this once before, but I talked about the, uh, my dad. And when I got saved uh, at the age of eight, I went wholeheartedly into uh, Christianity, reading and studying in my word. And I would pray and, and interrogate the Holy Ghost. What you mean by this? And I had to develop that relationship with God quite early because no adult was around me to explain the scriptures to me. Mm. Oh. So I was forced into a relationship with the Holy Ghost at an early age. But my dad, when he found out I was uh, had given my life to Christ and I had a Bible, someone gave me a Holy Bible, he came to me and he snatched that Bible out of my hand mm. because he was a part of the nation of Islam. Mm. And he put in my hand a Quran. And he said, you're going to have to read this cover to cover and tell me why you are rejecting Islam mm. before you bring this Christian Bible into my home. Now, that was, that was the, the law that was laid down before me. 
And it was anticipated because my mom told me, you know, your dad ain't going to be happy if you join that church. You can visit, but don't try to join. And as soon as my aunt took me one uh, resurrection Sunday morning, guess what I did? <laughs> Walk my little happy foot down. <laughs> In light of anticipated criticism, mm. I did not know my dad would go to that extent, but I did anticipate his disapproval. Yeah. Okay. You see what I'm saying? But you got to do what God tells you to do, regardless of what you think people might do. David wasn't the only one in the scriptures who anticipated criticism, but obeyed God anyway. In Exodus 1, 16 through 18, we read this charge given to the midwives of the Hebrew women during the time they were slaves. Mm -hmm. And Pharaoh wanted all male babies killed. Mm -hmm. It says, when you help the Hebrew women as they give birth, watch them as they deliver. And if the baby is a boy, kill it. Kill it. Mm -hmm. That was his order. And if it is a girl, let her live. Mm -hmm. Now hear their response in face of the anticipated criticism and persecution that they could have received. It says, because the midwives feared God, didn't I tell you, you got to fear, fear God? God. Because they feared God, they refused to obey the king's orders. Yeah. And they allowed the boys to live too. So the king of Egypt called for the midwives, talking about why you did this, he demanded. Why have you allowed those boys to live? Let me say this. If you know something has come from God, ain't no way in the world you should let a human being tell you not to do it. Mm. There's no way in the world. There comes a time in your life where you must make the decision of Acts 5.29. But Peter and the apostles answered, we must obey God rather than men. So in light of anticipated criticism, take courage and obey God. The second situation we got to listen to and we got to remember when having courage and criticism is that even when the criticism is unforeseen, you didn't anticipate criticism coming from this direction. In the moment when your heart is racing and you're sweating and you don't know what's going on, all right? In that moment, you must still have courage and obey God. Now consider David's exchange with his older brother, Eliab. David, the youngest, most likely looked up to his oldest brother. And in 1 Samuel 17, 28 through 29, it says, Now Eliab, the oldest brother, heard when he spoke to the men, and Eliab's anger burned against David. And he said, Why are you coming down here? What are you here for? And with whom did you leave those few little sheep in the wilderness? Hear him. Here is Eliab. I know your insolence and the wickedness of your heart. Is that not criticism? Mm -hmm. Now listen, this is the same man that God, that told Samuel that David was a God after, a man after his own heart. So God is saying, this is a man after my own heart, yet here is his oldest brother talking about your insolent and wickedness of your heart. You see how you can't listen to man? Mm -hmm. Man totally contradicts God himself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When it comes to you, God knows your thoughts and the intentions of your heart. You cannot allow man to dictate uh, what is going on with you. For you have come down in order to see the battle. But David said, what have I done now? Was it not just a question? This was the same Eliab, pay attention. This was the same Eliab who saw the oil flow when the prophet Samuel anointed his younger brother as king. Mm. Hear me clearly. So even though David wasn't present, when Samuel told David's father that God had rejected the older brothers, Eliab was there. Mm. The older brother was in the room, y'all. Mm. Come on. Mm. Eliab understood that God chose his younger brother over himself who based on Samuel's initial reaction to him probably looked more kingly than his younger brother. Mm. So what am I applying here? Is sometimes people are harsh in their assessment of you and mm. their opinion of you because of petty jealousies 
and envy. They envy the call on your life and inwardly covet or want the gifts, the talent, the position, the title, and the anointing. Therefore, they criticize. So Eliab criticized David's actions as well as his heart. He projected onto David the wickedness that was in his own heart. Mm. So even though his oldest brother criticism was unforeseen and his heart was probably racing with adrenaline at the scene of Goliath's threats and in the face of uh, his brother's criticisms, David still had courage. Mm -hmm. You want to know how we know? Because in 1 Samuel 17, 30, the Bible says he turned away from his older brother mm -hmm. and said the same thing to other people. Mm -hmm. And the other people answered the same way as before. We had an example that was with Teresa, Sister Teresa and, and Sister Faith, if you all recall. And I was in the middle of them. And Sister Teresa, I told her, act like you're telling me off. And she was doing her head. Y'all remember that? <laughs> doing her head back to her She was gone. And did you remember what I did? I turned around and looked for it directly at Faith. Mm. Because in real life situations, uh, people of God, that's what you may have to do. Mm -hmm. regardless of who it is mm -hmm. all right people are criticizing you they're criticizing the words god said you said uh for you to say they're criticizing your actions you got to learn to turn from those people and just keep moving mm -hmm. that's the courageous part mm -hmm. that's the courage mm -hmm. it's for you to keep moving keep acting mm -hmm. amen mm -hmm. yes. David was focused on doing the things of God, taking action against the Philistine, and therefore cannot focus on the verbal assault, the criticism launched against him from his brother. David was focused on achieving the will of God and upholding God's honor. So David took courage and criticism, even when that criticism was unforeseen, and I'm moving on. The third and final point we must remember when having courage and criticism is that even when criticism is after the fact, it comes subsequent to things we've done or things we've said, we must maintain courage and continue to obey God moving forward. This one may be the hardest because it comes with reflection. Mm. Now, I'm going to say this. There is nothing wrong with self-reflection. That's right. But did you all remember before when I was talking about self-talk? Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So you have to be um, cognizant of the fact that sometimes when you are reflecting over things you've said or things you've done, you things you've done, that can easily turn into negative self-talk. Mm -hmm. Negative mm -hmm. self-criticism. Are y'all hearing me? It's very easy because it's a thin line. All right. You're just reflecting. You're just looking. You're just thinking about things and, and toiling it or analyzing it over and over in your mind. I should have, I should have said this. Oh, I could have done this. And before you know it, man, that's, that was a stupid thing to do. That was a stupid thing to say. Do you see how easy that self-reflection, that self-talk can turn into criticism? Mm -hmm. We must maintain courage and continue to obey, obey God. All right? Um, there are good things about self-reflection, all right? But when it's coupled with criticism, self-doubt mm. may also accompany the self-reflection. Consider, for example, David's response with those um, as Ziklag criticized him because of their camp being raided, it says in 1 Samuel 30 and verse 6, he says, Moreover, David was greatly distressed because the people spoke of stoning him. For all the people were embittered, each one because of his sons and daughters. Now listen closely because here comes um, David's courage. It says, but David strengthened himself. Remember when we defined courage, right? We said that it was strength. Uh, but David strengthened himself in the Lord, his God. David was able to move forward to seeking God in prayer and ultimately in pursuing the Amalekites to get back all that was stolen. So mm -hmm. even after criticism, we must have courage to move forward after others have expressed their views 
uh, found fault mm -hmm. with us, we got to have that courage to obey and move forward. It's needed before, doing, and after others have criticized you, judged you severely, and found fault in you. Now, David isn't the only example in the Bible, even though those were examples in our book of courage and, critic and criticism. Consider the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah actually said in 20 verses uh, 9 through 11, and I'm going to read from the children's Bible, all right, the New International Reader's version to keep the scriptures clear. Here is what Jeremiah said. He said, sometimes I think, here's that self-talk, sometimes I think I ain't going to talk about his message no more. Mm -hmm. I ain't going to speak in his name. Mm -hmm. But then, and he's praying now, he's talking to God, then your message burns in my heart. Yeah. It's like fire deep yes. inside my bones. Yes. And I'm tired of holding it in. In fact, I can't. Mm -hmm. I hear many people whispering. Now, here's the criticism. You get it? Mm -hmm. I hear people whispering. Sometimes it's not good for you to always hear what people got to say about you. Ignore that. Yes. Why do you need to know? You don't. Mm -hmm. You don't. <laughs> I hear many people, as a matter of fact, there's sometimes people will call me on the phone and be like, girl, guess what so-and-so said? I'll be like, you know what, I, I really don't want to know. Yeah. You know, and I do yeah. it as nice as I can, or sometimes I say, I, I, I really don't care. Mm. And I'm just as sincere. Mm -hmm. I could care less. What, are gonna, what, are, what, 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 what did you expect me to do? Yeah. Yeah. If God told me to do it, I'm going to keep doing what he told me to do. Mm -hmm. Regardless of what people say, you don't always need to hear gossip, y'all. Mm -hmm. I hear, and this is uh, Jeremiah, he said, I hear many people whispering. There is terror on every side. Bring charges against Jeremiah. Let's bring charges against him. Here He still goes, all my friends are waiting for me to slip up. Mm. They are saying perhaps he will be tricked into making a mistake. Then we'll win out over him. We'll get even with him. Do you hear the criticism? Mm -hmm. Do you hear the persecution? Yes. Now hear Jeremiah's uh, courage in verse 11. He said, but God, you are with me mm -hmm. like a mighty warrior. Mm -hmm. So those who are trying to harm me, they finna trip and fall. Yes. <laughs> they won't win. Yes. yes. They won't win out over me. They will fail. They'll be totally put to shame. Yes. And their dishonor will never be forgotten. Yes. You heard the criticism. You heard the persecution. But you also heard Jeremiah's courage in the end. He had to go to God in prayer and encourage himself. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's the only place courage is going to come. It's going to come from you encouraging yourself. You take that shield of faith. You've girded up your loins with truth. You've taken on the breastplate of righteousness. You shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You got the helmet yeah. of salvation. The next thing is that shield yeah. of faith. Yeah. And your sword in the spirit is a two-edged sword. Yeah. Yeah. It's the word of God. Yeah. Saints, you got to be fully armored in this hour yes. if you're going to have courage and criticism. Yes. Amen. Amen. That's good. Amen. Amen. He wrestled during the self-reflection, but then he didn't allow that criticism to stick with, with him. I'm going to go ahead and try to move forward because I know we got to get to questions. I want to talk about a real life contemporary um, example. And I hate I'm having to skip through so much. That's okay. Um, here it is. I want to talk about a contemporary example of courage in criticism. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it was a, a, about um, full gospel. Full gospel. Our very own founder and overseer, Bishop Paul S. Morton, in his establishment of full gospel Baptist Church Fellowship. On YouTube, you can see the entire history of Full Gospel in the video called Free to Dance. Mm -hmm. If you are able to get to uh, the Sunday School um, Facebook page, I put a link out there. It's only an hour and a half video. 
but it's worth it's worth a look. Amen. 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 In it, you see how the founding bishops, the senior pastors, and the leaders of full gospel endured criticism and persecution. And through it all, they had courage through the Holy Ghost. Full gospel was designed to bridge the gap between a systematic Baptist and a spiritualistic Pentecost. So full gospel embraced fully and promoted women preaching in ministry. Uh, full gospel embraces and encourages fully expressive praise and worship in addition to the traditional devotion. Through all of this, criticism and persecution came from the traditional National Baptists. So what happened to those pastors? They were uninvited or kicked out from their state conventions. Friendships ended. Mm. And this is all in the video. Families, full families were separated, all because it was time for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. Now, according to the, new, the video, it says the new structure was the power of the Holy Ghost. The Baptists didn't like that it, because it looked weird to them. Mm. <laughs> Y'all understand? Mm -hmm. It was a weird belief. Uh, and operating through the gifts of the Spirit and the first African-American Baptist bishop with a large following. Uh, bishop Morton actually has a book called Changing Forward, and it'll bless your entire life to read the book if you haven't already. But in his book, and I quote, and I'm about to wrap it up, it says, when you are blazing a new path, you must expect, and this is Bishop talking, Bishop Morton, you must expect and endure hardships along the way. There will be difficulties and criticisms and you will sometimes feel alone. Yes. The new thing that was taking place in the full gospel Baptist church fellowship was considered impossible according to the people, but nothing is impossible with God. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. 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 Wait, whatever you do, don't do <laughs> So I'm going to I'm going to do this. Give just a few minutes. This won't take long. If there are any questions, I know you can't sit on it and it's burning inside of you. So she's here for those questions. Questions. Comments. Yes, ma'am. I found out that criticism isn't always open. It can be silent. Mm -hmm. And I realized the Lord taught me, you know. The um, school of the Holy Spirit, because I have an honorary um, degree in church peopleology. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I hear you. You know, he allow you will allow you to discern just how people feel. Yeah. And I realized that was something I had from a little girl. I didn't know what it was, but I always knew they would never say a word. Mm -hmm. And then when when, it, when it's open, when it was open as I went along in church, I couldn't say anything. I was just looking at them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's not always, uh, and, and, and he taught me, it's not your problem. Right. It's there. Uh -huh. yeah. right. So, you know, we just, we just continue. You said so much, just so much. And I didn't have to do all the time. But thank you so much. That is so much. <laughs> You're right. You know, um, Jesus said in his word, he said, everyone will hate you because of me. Yeah. The hate is a strong word. It is. It's a strong word. But I don't believe Jesus used it indiscriminately. No. What he, he meant exactly what he said. And even sometimes uh, people can be, you know, within a church body. Sometimes they can be sitting on the pew with you. All right. But that discernment has to kick in. But the thing that you have to realize is even when you discern a person's heart towards you, you got to still have that courage. Mm -hmm. You got to still have that courage and stand flat footed and do what it is God told you to do. Amen. Uh, Deacon in the back. Yeah, I got to come in. Just piggyback on the uh, criticism that you mentioned about full gospel. Mm -hmm. uh, many of you don't know it, but I was a deacon back when full gospel was formed from the Mother Church. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And Bishop uh, Gavin all the members of the church together. Mm -hmm. And at the time, we had about 33,000 members mm -hmm. uh, well, in Red St. Stephen. And he asked everybody, are they in favor of the new movement? Mm -hmm. And everybody gathered around and, and just praise and worship, except for one deacon. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> that was against the movement. Mm -hmm. That's when they, uh, he was dismissed from the church All right. because of it. Mm -hmm. But fortunately, we had everyone in church, and, I mean, and, and Red St. Stephen, uh -huh. that rallied around full gospel. And the very first conference that we had, we had the, uh, the venue at a small location. It was an arena. Mm -hmm. And we had to move it to uh, the Superdome because so many people was interested in that first uh, uh, convention. Wow. And I think uh, there was over 20,000 people gathered in that convention. It's a lot more than that. Mm -hmm. I'm saying 20,000, but, but it had to have been somewhere around uh, 50,000. And, 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 and that's how full gospel started. Amen. 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 And I always wonder, even if it was more than that one deacon, uh, deacon that went against yeah. him, yeah. he would have found a way to start full gospel anyway, yeah. because it was such a it was such a weight yeah. and a burden yeah. on him. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. God bless you. Mm -hmm. God bless everybody. God bless you. I'm, I'm just excited about what you said about the courage, because God do have to give you that courage. Yes. And it's, a, it's about a growth. Yeah. Yeah. You got to grow in that thing, yeah. because. Um, it, it's, it's something else to be when you was in the world, you get hurt. Uh, and it didn't bother you, but you just say what you got to say and get it off my mind. Right. You know, right. You got Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's some ways that he'll just quiet your spirit down. Mm -hmm. When you know you're finna say something, yes. he'll just walk down. He'll just say, and, and, and when God called me, and, and, it was, it, and, and when he calls you from the, the womb, uh huh. And the enemy was trying to been trying to take me out for a long time. A long time. But the, the but the enemy keeps saying keep rising me back up. God, and I got to thinking about how when uh, when you was talking about the different names of the house of prayer, yes, or names of religion, and 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 and, and I, it, it amazes me to see that when you I went to the uh, non-denominational. Oh yes. Missionary, Jericho Missionary Baptist Church of Holiness. Yes. And, and it, it seems like the things that they were doing were like the same, but just had a different title. Just one little thing. It's just that, it, I mean, it was praising God, we shouted, we, we, we shut in, we did all this, and the same was with the other house of prayer. Mm -hmm. So it's all about just knowing who you are in God, mm -hmm. as you said. How, what, what did, what, what did God do? He called you. Mm -hmm. So you have to get to the point where I'll just say now, when, even when somebody would say, I'm going to pray for you. And then I would say, I want to hear you, baby. I, I want to hear you. Yes, yes. See, I don't know what you're praying. I'm praying. Yeah. People ain't praying the right prayer. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then you have to say that. Not because you're trying to be rude. Right. Not because right. you're trying to judge anybody. But you have to be careful because the enemy is came to yeah. not people's kicked out of heaven. Right. So he got some sleep ways. But God told me, and I would cut it off. He, mm -hmm. he said, go to this bishop mm -hmm. and tell the, the, the obey God. Mm -hmm. And I said, whoa, that's a big church. And but no, first I didn't come what church was. And so the Lord said, look on the east mm -hmm. and look up, look it up. And I did. I said, whoa, that's a big church. He said, get up and go to now. Mm -hmm. When the Spirit of God speak to you, mm -hmm. you won't be confused. Right. People will try to confuse you, mm -hmm. but you have to obey God because you know it's God. Mm -hmm. It's something about the Holy Spirit that uh, lets you know it's Him. Because guess what? You're going to get confirmation. Right. And when I did what God said, it was on, it was on Wednesday, and, and, and I was in the, in the audience, and, and uh, He was preaching the Word. I get excited when He's preaching the Word. It just, it, just, it just does something in you when, when the Word's coming forth. Mm -hmm. And I just said, Obey oh, God. Just go ahead. Do what God said. Mm -hmm. And so He looked, and He's trying to see who was speaking. And, and He called me into the office, and I said, Oh, Jesus. I went, I, 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 you know, I, not church adequate. Got no church adequate. I said, "Oh Lord, bracing yourself for the criticism." Yes. But it, he, he, he was just saying, "Woman of God, I thank you for mm -hmm. just, uh, just pushing me in and telling me what God said." They had made a shirt about obey, put a, obey God. I made a T-shirt, and the thing is, is that it wasn't about me. Right. But I had to give that message, and and, and when God sent you somewhere. You have to go. You got to and, and, and when you and when you call, truly, it, it's something about Jesus. When he, when he do call you, you, you be saying, "Why I had? To, why I got to do this? Why I got to see that?" What, you know, because you're seeing things that are amazing, but it kind of like puts you a little scared because you say, "Oh Lord, see that?" And you got to make sure it's, it's God. And, but but the thing is so amazing when you get the courage. That's right. When, it, when people do things to you and, and, and try to try to do things to you, yes, you gotta have courage anyway. You know what we want. You gotta have that courage anyway. And you gotta have that 
encouraged Amen. you to just go ahead anyway. Yeah. Because I, I had I had never experienced being so cut down when I was taking care of my husband. Yes. And yes. so many things was spoke on me. Mm. I was saying, wait a minute. And, and and we did so much for people. Yeah. You know, you help people. Yeah. Bring them up and help them up. That's why we're telling people it's time to pray, sisters yes. and brothers, yes. for each other. Amen. And when we stop it, yes. then when the people come in, and they see the love and, and the blessings of God. Because the most time we can talk about this. Right, right, right. And you're going to be a judge. Right. Now I can say something. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, she said that. Right. So we got to gotta close it up. We got to wrap it up. That's No, but it's good. Because we do have to pray for each other. We do have to maintain that courage. But um, we also have to be healed. Yeah. Right? Yes. And we have to make sure that what has happened in the past don't hinder our moving forward in God in the future. So let's give God a love and change. Y'all know we love our sister, right? Amen. 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 What a wonderful, wonderful lesson today. We will not linger here. We would suggest to you, please, there was so much in that to go back. Do the replay, like, and share what was taught this morning. Yes. To our streaming audience, we want to say thank you for joining the Change Your Way Out of the Box Sunday School. Online, you will see some of the ways of giving. We appreciate you in advance for your financial contribution. So we say to our streaming, have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. And as we say in our Sunday School, the Sunday School needs you and... We will see you next Sunday at 945. Be blessed and have a wonderful week. Amen.